What's up guys? Blazing Wrath here. Back with another video. Uh, this time we're gonna check out the, uh, the video I mentioned in my last video. About the, the one that's like a half hour from 343. So I'm, I'm expecting to see some good things and I definitely expect to see some maybe not so good things, whatever the hell they're gonna say. So let's just jump right in. Guys, before we look ahead to the future, I think we just want to take a moment to acknowledge we've had some challenges since launch. Yeah. Um, you know, Joseph, last time you and I were here, we talked about a roadmap that had a season two that was longer than we or our players would have wanted, but it was important to us that we needed to take some time uh, and move a little slower then so we could ultimately move faster later. How are you thinking about the future of Infinite's live service? What we want to achieve for our loyal players, because we have a lot of them, it's super clear that our number one priority needs to be achieving seasonality. Now, what does that mean? It means we need to get our players more of what they want, and we need to get, the, get it to them faster and with more consistency than we have. Players need to be able to feel rewarded for playing no matter what they play. We believe that players feel need to be able to feel like they belong and can express their Halo identity in meaningful ways. We I'm also want an, ex good. an experience that's competitive and fair. We are a very competitive game. That's our DNA, right. that's who we are. Right. Right? You go back all the way to the very first Halo, right? Multiplayer, I mean, it is it is a highly competitive game. And so we want an experience where players can expect that the game is competitive and fair and skill and teamwork should be a path to victory. Um, that doesn't mean abandoning social players. That's not what that means, but it is about fairness and competition. The last uh, priority is stable and high quality. Oh no, before we move on, I have more to say on that. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> I can't. Wait. Uh, no, dis no discredit, discredit to Sean here. I mean, he. What I'm seeing is actually really good. Like this is like, okay, this is like good, moving forward. But <laughs> Halo being Halo being a highly competitive game since the beginning. No video game starts off highly competitive. No video game really. The community makes it competitive first. The developers need to focus on making a game fun first. Let me give you an example, a completely different example. Let's look at Street Fighter V for those that played that game. Street Fighter V. When that game came out, it was basically like Halo 5. Bare bones content. There was no arcade mode. And even the gameplay wasn't bad, but it was just like boring. Now, since I'm a more competitive fighting gamer, I didn't mind it being bare bones like it was a like despite the gameplay of street fighter 5 being bare bones it was competitively good like it was fair it was it was fun in that sense but it wasn't fun for like casuals in a sense which is like there there isn't a lot of crazy shit casuals can do and i think that partially besides just the lack of content that i think that also partially like hurt hurt street fighter 5 obviously now Street Fighter V is a is a much better game, and there's a bunch of just unga bunga stuff you can do in the game now. And so as a result, the, the game's a lot more fun now. But Street Fighter V is an example of a game coming out too competitive and lack of content, and it didn't do so good. So it took, I want to say, two almost, like season two wasn't that good. Uh, it took I want to say up to season three is when the, it was when the game started to really pick up. But that's just a quick example of like, never make sure the game's fun first, then making competitive later. All right, that that's really all I want to say. I mean, Halo, I guess then I'll talk about Halo, Halo for a second. So Halo CE, m me and probably majority of my friends make fun of that game because it's like, we can't see it as competitive because it's just, it's, I see it as just stupid fun. However, I've looked up videos for the hardcore CE guys. I've looked up videos on like, like what skill ceilings or what, what's there to learn in the game competitively. And it's like, it's a pretty deep game actually. When you actually look into CE tech and what high level players like Walshy can do or Ogre 2, if you watch them play, like they do stuff that nobody else does. So CE competitively has some depth. But as you can see, like players discovered that later. The developers probably did, like Bungie didn't probably intend that kind of stuff at all. The players found that shit, not Bungie. Same thing with Halo 2, you know, the button combo glitches. Bungie definitely for sure didn't intend button combos in Halo 2 at all. There's no way they would allow that. 
players found that shit. And then, you know, created a competitive community about Halo 2. And then, following the, the success of CE, it, it blew up. And, and MLG came around. And then, Halo 3 was the more polished, like, Halo 2. And, you know, the community just blew just blew even further. Now, some people, some competitive players don't like Halo 3 because of the because the Halo 2 button combos had a lot of depth and that depth was lost in Halo 3. Um, Halo 3 is definitely a lot more of a slower paced game, but eh, that's getting into another topic. The point is, the community makes the games competitive first, not the devs. The devs should make a fun game first and then balance things out later. That's, that's how it should be. Uh, we want players to expect a smooth quality experience with a very few technical issues. We really fall down there. Okay, now I gotta stop right there. I feel like there's a few technical issues that need to be fixed now. <laughs> Desync, skill based matchmaking, and the competitive skill rank. Oh, and by the way, the champion rank is still missing in the game. That was an A level 5. Theater needs to be fixed. Custom games needs more features that are kind of missing and I don't I'm not sure I'm a little bit unsure on how the state of custom games is that's and of course the UI needs to be more stable more responsive faster that's about it as far as technical issues go like that I want to fix like now there is one more thing I want to say uh I just re I just remembered going back to like the whole competitive casual thing or however you want to call it is the fact that he says you know that teamwork should always be the the thing, right, to, to victory. And that's true. But there is somewhat of a lack of individuality, like as far as like uh, gameplay goes in Halo Infinite. Halo CE, the the pistol, even though it's a three shot kill, it you're not always gonna get that three shot kill. You have to lead your shots. And then of course if you hold the trigger, then you're you're firing in full auto and then the bloom kicks in so the the pistol in halo ce grants individual skill and then in halo 2 it was the button combos that 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 granted individual skill and then halo 3 was probably the one where the first halo game where it lead it led more towards team play and the individual skill was sort of taken away uh, the only factor that still that's, that kind of represents individual skill that's still in is like the projectile like that the projectile speed it's it's slower with the battle rifle so you have to lead your shots and then halo 5 out of yeah halo 5 we'll just skip four <laughs> halo 5 had the spartan abilities which also you can express individuality with the spartan abilities halo infinite right now has curb slides and anything with the slide tech and of course, if you can get good with the sandbox, but it's too, like, like the battle rifle is too easy right now, where it's just like, there isn't much you can do against it. Whereas with Halo 5, with the Halo 5 Magnum, you had thrust, so there was some more outplayability there. And then, like I said, Halo 2's button combos, and then Halo CE with the projectile, same with Halo 3. Like, the, the point is with, with what all I'm, all I'm saying here is that Halo Infinite needs more individuality, and I feel like it's... It's just a few adjustments away to incorporate more individuality because Halo Infinite already has that team play. Like it, the game already requires teamwork, and that's good. It just needs more individuality, and there there are a few changes or adjustments that I think need to be made. It, it, like it's not. I'm not saying Halo Infinite needs thrust, like as a as a as a permanent ability. It doesn't. I mean, the Halo CE and and Halo, and Halo Two were able to do it. And a, and a bit of Halo 3 with, again, the Soul Projectile BR. It's just a few adjustments away. And Halo Infinite, I think, can do it. We understand that there are moments in our gameplay when it's really hard to see uh, differences between what you're experiencing, uh, what you think you're experiencing, and what the game is telling you is happening, right? And so I'm talking about what we call our UCN issues, right? Um, sort of M M MP gameplay performance issues. We, we really are going to be focused on, on those we want to increase ranked options for gameplay 
um, server input and matchmaking options, and obviously anti-cheat. Like that's a big deal, especially on PC, like a huge deal. Joseph, I did want to kind of throw to you, I know primarily we're discussing these priorities through the lens of our free-to-play multiplayer service, but safe to say this is bigger than that. This is a studio-wide initiative and everyone's going after this. Yeah, that's right. I mean, not only to go after this list of things that you talked about, which we're fired up to do, but to work on experiences that we're not quite ready to talk about yet, we have had to make the difficult decision not to ship campaign split screen co-op and take the resources that we would use on that and go <laughs> not joe's fault at least i don't think it is i don't want to believe it is i'm sure he's just reporting things as they come i'm not too surprised i'm not that upset it's funny i laugh at this point and, you know, season three getting delayed. Here's the thing: it's like, unless Halo Infinite is still your main game that you play every day, then yeah, I could see why you'd be upset. But for me, I've partially moved on uh, as a Halo fan. Like, Halo Infinite isn't the main game I play every day, or even my a main game in general that I play every day at all. Like, no longer the case. I, I've partially moved on. I will never. F I will never completely move on because I'll always be a Halo fan, but it's just like Halo's just not that main game I play every day. So season three being delayed it, for me is not a huge issue. As a matter of fact, I see it as a for me I see it as a W as it gives three four three and maybe certain affinities BR mode more time to develop. Because this this game needs this game needed more time in the oven. Yeah, there's just some thoughts that I wanted to express. Tell, talk to us about uh, the Winter Update's 30-tier free battle pass and yeah. what that entails. And so, since we launched Halo Infinite, one of the very first pieces of feedback was, hey, I want to be able to have rewards based off of what I do and how I do in a match, right? And so, we gave people those daily bonuses, we made some changes, and I think that relieves some of the pressure. But um, in, in this season, we're bringing a match XP, which is meant to not fully replace challenges, but to sort of become the main way that you're gonna progress through something like a battle pass. And it is meant to reward you specifically for playing Halo the way you wanna play it. So any mode you wanna play, um, you'll get uh, XP for the, basically the time that you're playing, but also how you do. Do you win? How, are you, how do you personally do? That sort of stuff. That impacts your total XP output from that. Imagine that's a... Wow. So I have a reason to care about playing social multiplayer because I just go for challenges that are just bullshit. Wow. I can play the game now. <laughs> uh wow. I, I I can play I can play the video game now. Cool. Um, and so we had a couple goals there with the battle pass where we wanted to say thank you to people because it matters a lot that people stuck with us and is such such good fans um, yeah halo infinite needs a shit ton of freebies it needs a lot of freebies that is something that splitgate does very well i mean i'm i'm kind of shitty at the game but i have a lot of fun with it and i get rewarded for playing that game each time i jump in like i feel welcomed every time i play splitgate like splitgate is just a it's just a fun game. Even as someone like me who's like not the best at it, I'm alright with it. Uh, I'm getting a little better with portals, but, but Slickgate does this very well. It's welcoming, uh, I get rewarded each time I play it, and it's just an overall fun time. Even even if some games, you know, like I'll match with people that are good with portals, but regardless, I still have fun with the game. And yeah, Slickgate's a prime example of that. Yeah, and then... So I don't know if you said the date, but the date for season three, it's going to be March 7th.
And I like people to think of this season, like our players, they should think of this season as the beginning of what seasonality is. Mm -hmm. Like we should start getting to that goal of 13 week seasons. Not saying that's a 13 week season, but I'm saying this is the beginning. Right. We've got maps, we've got modes, we've got sandbox updates. Joseph, walk us through that. Yeah, so we've got two new maps for season three. We're not revealing the names of these maps yet. Uh, one is a BTB map and one is an arena map. Well, this is one of our biggest BTB maps yet. And fictionally, uh, this is a UNSC research site that's arrayed across this desert cliff where they're studying this mysterious Forerunner artifact. And to do that, they've actually dug into the cliffside and created this cavern system. And what that means is there are a lot of fun infantry routes in these caverns, through these tunnels, and on the outside, on the actual cliff, we've got a lot of fun vehicle routes as well. And this really is meant to be a map that embraces vehicular combat. Flying vehicles, ground vehicles, big wide open spaces, and lots of vehicles available. And the second map, our arena map, fictionally, this is an Oni black site, and it's built into an ice-bound mountaintop. This map looks amazing. It's got these, these snow, ice, really, really cool looking map. It's asymmetrical uh, and emphasizes environmental control, ownership, power positions. This plays really great with Strongholds, King of the Hill, One Flag, CTF, and of course, Slayer. Uh, one thing that's unique about this map is it's got a gravity launcher that basically takes you all the way across the map. Super high risk, high reward, uh, but super fun element in that particular map. And we'll be talking more about those in the future. So the BTB map, uh, I don't really have too much of an issue at all, really. I mean, it looks fine. The arena map, I sort of have issue with it. Uh, at least, here's the thing. It's another UNSC facility, which we already have enough of, but at least it takes place in the snow, so it's kind of different. Here's something I suggested. I know every, well, maybe not everybody, but like I've seen people, you know, people who want bit ship back as a remake of some sort. And my opinion is that I think Aquarius already covers that midship style of play. If if people want another midship kind of map, I would suggest Halo Reach's Zealot. Just take that and then just banish the look of it. Yeah, that's what I would do with it. Like, like maybe that's an arena map I would personally like. Like bring back Zealot from Halo Reach and just change it to the aesthetic to banished. I think that would be interesting. It'd be another aesthetic difference. Like we don't. I don't think we have a banished arena map yet. We got one for B2B, but we don't have one for arena. Something different. And as well as like gameplay elements too. Like at least the forge ones that they mentioned, the arena one, one has like what teleporters and lifts. Okay. That's cool. We, we need more, uh, map interactables. Like, like Halo 2, like Halo 2 Zanzibar with the, with the big ass wheel or like, Halo 2 Anniversary's version of Lock Lockdown, where it had icicles that you can shoot from the, from the ceiling. Like we need stuff like that, and I guess the arena also needs more more like exploding barrels. But I get also at the same time I get why maybe they're not much in the arena because you can actually pick them up now. At least just add one. I would like to, yeah, I think one like barrel per arena map could help alleviate that. Like. Because you can pick them up now, you can't just put barrels everywhere. Also, I noticed in the arena maps, a lot of grapple shot and repulsor is still being added. That's probably because they're the best equipments in the game. You gotta... I guess you need more fun equipment, man. I mean, uh, I don't think a threat sensor would work well in arena. I can see why that's 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 just gonna stick with BTB. Uh, drop wall isn't that impressive, so I guess I can see why the repulsor and grapple shot keep being used. Uh, those are my thoughts on like the new maps and stuff that are coming like we need more interactables uh, environmental elements uh, and a banished arena map take my suggestion 343 bring back halo reaches zealot and then just banished it and yeah that that, that would that would be that's my take on maps when it comes to halo infinite we also have some additions coming to infinite sandbox uh, with season three yep we're working on one new weapon and one new piece of equipment the bandit rifle and the shroud screen which you may have seen some uh, video of that leak a little uh, recently but i want to go into detail on these so we're all on the same page about exactly how they work uh, so starting with the bandit this rifle feels like the reach dmr but the goal here was really to make it much more effective at close range so we remove the scope 
You can still zoom in using Smart Link in the same way you can zoom in using uh, with the pistol, but you can't be de-scoped. Super fun weapon, glad it's coming into the sandbox. And then we have the shroud screen. Think of the shroud screen like a 26th century high-tech smoke screen. And the goal of the shroud screen is to enable area denial. So what this means is it doesn't block grenades or projectiles. If you're inside the screen, you can't see out. If you're outside the screen, you can't see in. Players who are inside the shroud screen do not show up at all on radar, even when they're firing. It comes with two charges uh, off the equipment pad and can hold- Ooh, I didn't know about that. You don't appear on radar. Okay, that's something to keep in mind. I, I kind of like that. Okay. Hold a maximum of four charges. I'm not a fan of equipment, and I guess it's another opinionated sandbox piece for me. I'm not a fan of equipment holding more than one piece. The grapple shot, repulsor, and the thruster, those three abilities, I don't mind them holding three charges at a time because they're more personal, right? Those, th those three pieces of equipment are basically armor abilities. They enhance the player. Whereas things like the drop wall, the threat sensor, and now we're getting this new shroud screen. These get added to the map. I think these type of things should be, in a, in a way, more powerful. Like, like the drop wall and threat sensor, and now the shroud screen. Like, I hope the like these these three pieces of equipment should be more powerful, but at the cost of only one charge because they get added into the map, and that you know. It's something that gets added to the environment that could affect potentially both parties. Now I have seen other pieces of equipment that don't like that do get added to the to the environment. But maybe I'll talk about those things as we get closer to them. That's my take on equipment sandbox pieces. But there's a lot to look forward to uh, with season three when it arrives on March seventh. Yep. You know, in addition, just it goes without saying, each of our updates will also include a variety of bug fixes, quality of life improvements, and all the things that we're getting in through the Halo support site and the player feedback avenues. So yeah. we'll have more information, obviously, as we get closer, official patch notes and things like that. So lots to look forward to. Guys, appreciate your time today. Yeah. Uh, before we go, any final closing thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, um, I just wanted to express my gratitude to the players. Uh, you are some of the most dedicated fans and players that exist in gaming. Uh, and I am really excited for what we're going to be able to do for you and the rest of this year. and next year and beyond that so just really really grateful yeah and i'll just echo your thank you sean and also say i'm fired up i can't wait to see all of you jump into co-op see some speed runs um have forge just light up and all the creativity begin for real with the beta um, it's just a really fun time uh, we're working hard and we can feel that momentum start to move and things start to accelerate so thanks for your patience um, it's going to be fun and a lot more to talk about for the winter update as we get closer to that release on November 8th. So on behalf of the entire studio, thank you. Thank you for playing. Thank you for your feedback. We're really excited to turn this corner. Can't wait to kick off the winter update on November 8th.